Hey y'all, it is Andrea here at VW Family Farm and it is getting to be mid to late August here. And if you've been following us for a while, you know we let our front garden rest this year. We left, um, left it open and we've planted two different times now things to replenish the soil. We planted things, I don't know if you can see the beautiful flowers out here, things that would not only feed our bees, we have about 20-ish hives of bees, and but also things that would, when mowed down, would mulch down and feed the soil. Uh, we planted also fall crops last fall and let them grow all winter. Those were things that would dig down and grow roots and draw up nutrients from the soil and bring that more available to the surface for the plants. Now it's time to mow down this second crop of ground cover and let it lay there and kind of mulch in. I will probably till it in some. So let's get busy and get this whacked down. You can see it has grown like crazy. That is probably 10 feet tall in some spots. It is, it's really grown well. Uh, you can see we've got some deep dark greens in there. The soil is really getting healthier. I have hopes for a great garden in here next year. While we wait on the tractor to come over here, how beautiful is this arbor? Look at these peach colored roses. how much better that looks and it'll feed the soil so that actually was sun hemp sudan grass and african forage cabbage that's the three things we planted out there we got those from Haas tools uh, they've done really really well germinating and growing and i really think it's going to be a big benefit to the garden out there what'd you find between the army worms uh -oh. the army worms and the tomato worms Army worm, you can just usually rake and they'll just fall off and roll up into a ball. But then also, they little... have eaten this plant. Oh. Okay, let's do a trial and give it to the ducks.
So army worms are eating people's hay fields around here. They've eaten a lot of people's yards. People's yards are just brown and just dirt, basically. They have just demolished everything in this area. I've never seen them this bad uh, in my lifetime and especially in our time of being farmers and trying to grow hay. But the uh, tomato hornworms are pretty bad too. It's um, just been a bad year for pests. They've done some damage in a hurry, haven't they? Must have been going on vacation. They, uh, they took advantage of it. Ooh, they're so gross. This is something you definitely don't want to see in your fall garden on your squashes. Little squash bug eggs, basically. At this point, this squash plant is super small. I can just take these and squish them with my hand or step on them. I'm gonna put them right here on this plastic where I can see them. You could definitely spray with some neem oil or something to take care of these as well gonna try to avoid doing that and just squish these but you definitely won't be on the lookout look how many there is they'd have this thing eaten in no time you can also get some tape and then uh, get the sticky part to get these off of here and then squash them that way um, but that's probably a better method than the way I'm going about it but I've already started this and I'm committed to it so I'm gonna do it All right, it's gonna be a little noisy in the greenhouse, but I wanna take you guys in there and show you what all's going on in there. Ben's cleaned it up a lot. It's looking really good. It had gotten really overgrown, and it's gonna be a great place to grow fall stuff. We've already got quite a bit growing in here, actually, that's tiny. So let me just show you what we got. You can see this bok choy. It's kind of struggled with the hot weather but I really think that's about to come on and do well as it starts to cool off. And then he's got this bed looking nice and clean. There's some green sprouting in there. You can see them all down in the rocks. They just grow like crazy. If you're new to our channel, um, this is actually a system. There's no dirt in here. There's just water that flows under these rocks. No soil at all. Pretty amazing. Pretty cool to see. And then we've still got the kiwi plant in here. I mean, it actually has produced kiwis a time or two. And then this is Malabar spinach, my favorite kind. These little things, a lot of people call them berries. That's actually just seeds. That's full of seeds to start more. A couple cabbages still left in here that just kind of, once it gets hot, these have been in here since spring, honestly. They just kind of sit there. They don't do anything. We need to get those out and eat them, get some more planted in its place. Still got the lemon tree. It's loaded down this year. The most we've ever had. Just another pretty clean bed that he cleaned up. It was full of chocolate mint. He left me a little start of that. If you notice something's missing here, he took out the papaya tree. It's gone. It just wasn't doing well. It was just taking up space. And then this was just kind of a trial. It's way overgrown but it just proved to me this would be a great place to grow some cut flowers next year grew some humongous zinnias of course i would want to trellis them and make their stalks straight for um cut flowers for vases and things but all in all they really took off and kind of went crazy and then another bed full of greens lots sprouting in here we got we still got kale That'll start doing better as it cools off. And then this is planted again in lettuce. And if I was guessing, it's probably mere lettuce. That's our favorite greenhouse lettuce for sure. It doesn't get bitter and milky. Um, it just tastes the best. And then we've had a few questions back here about the fish as well. Um, we kept this full of tilapia for a long time. Then we had something go wrong and lost all our fish. 
and that is what fertilized this entire greenhouse. Uh, they were the life-giving source in this greenhouse. We've had several people question if we're gonna get fish again, and the question is, we don't know at this point. Uh, it's actually been pretty nice uh, because there are certain conditions we had to keep just simply because we had the fish in there. So that remains to be seen. We'll see. We may, but uh, we didn't have to keep it near as warm in the winter and um, just several different things we didn't have to worry about by not having the fish. And just to be honest with you guys, we have a lot of irons in the fire. So it's, it's kind of one of those things we're having to evaluate every situation and think, is that something we need to take on right now? Or are we better served to kind of say no for the moment? So that's where we're at on the fish, still kind of up in the air. What have you caught while I've been in the greenhouse? Well, I just found a few more tomato worms and then some, quite a few more of the army worms. Yeah. Ew. And then Ew. in We've our... We've had people ask like what army worms look like. You want to show them? Okay. That's a tomato worm. That's a tomato worm. Of course, that's a, a young one. This one right here is getting old and probably ready to, what do you call that, pupate? Yeah. You can see how much darker the little ones are. They're almost black. We've had people say that, like, well, I saw a different color than what a picture I saw. So you can see there's a variety of colors, actually. So army worm will end up pupating into a, uh, just a moth that's a uh, light colored moth. And they will go out into your yard, hay fields, pastures, everything, and lay tens of thousands of eggs. And the way I understand it is a rain is what uh, hatches them out and really get some going. This year, everywhere around Arkansas, it's just been a terrible year. But back when we had them back in the hay field and I was spraying for them, several of y'all commented, why don't we move the egg laying chickens or any of our chickens back there? One reason is, is I was told that chickens won't hardly eat army worms. Another reason is, is that field back there is just so big. There's no way we could have moved them the chickens around to eat the army worms before the army worms would have just eaten all eaten up all of our pasture i'm going to do a little bit of experiment because i was told that chickens will not eat these we're gonna throw them in here to these chickens in here and see if they'll eat them where are they at? put them right back there in the sun like about midway back and we'll see okay so we're gonna throw a tomato worm in there first whoop uh, it held onto my finger They're just looking at it. The ducks ate it. That's hilarious. That's what our chickens have always done. What about a bigger tomato worm? Same chicken, so I don't know if it's just her or if they don't like them. What about a army worm? Oh. That's hilarious. They're fighting over the army worm. How funny is that? I hate touching these, I'm just saying. You hate them? Yeah, I hate touching these. You're chicken, you're chicken. So I have that green worm laying on that two by four and they have walked right up to it and put their nose and beak down there, I guess you'd say. They will not touch it. Ben, come over here and put an army worm. We'll see what they do get. They fought over that first one. Put it on the wood, just like that one. Maybe right beside it, even. That is too funny. Well, I guess we'll have to feed the green worms to the ducks, because they don't mind them at all. You want to hear about a, a long, a colored corn baby. This is what I have to deal with. Okay. Chuck the corn bit your drill. I don't oh, know what Chuck. that means, but Chuck is a nickname from my daddy, so it must be good. Okay. Drill the corn bit into the base of the cob and gently push the rotating ear through the corn cutter. My goodness. The blades will adjust automatically to hug the cob. What? Don't give it a hug. They're going to adjust automatically. Catch the kernels in a clean, deep tub or bucket. It's got to be deep. Deep one. A deep one. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
if you are not using the kernel cutter tube. Do you got your tube? I don't have it. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to delete that part. Nope. What do you got there? We are reading directions for the kernel cutter. So we're fixing the cut. Kernels. Kernels <laughs> off of a corn cob. But we also have, wait for it, the corn cutter and creamer. So it is going to be an old fashioned showdown. What do you think, Em? Sounds wonderful. <laughs> all right. In all seriousness, we have been sent two kernel cutters two different names, two different companies, and we're gonna try them both out. We told them uh, when they sent them that we were gonna give an honest review, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're in no way affiliates of these companies. I wanna put that out there. Not that we would ever tell you anything but the truth, but just sometimes I think that makes a difference. Hey, Em. Hey, guys. But, um, so this is gonna be completely just an honest review of how these work and if you should purchase them or not. So we had one. Let me see if I can find it. My mom actually gave it to us. It's an antique. Uh, this is what she had a long time ago. And it, I would say it's probably made of some type, I don't know if it's stainless steel or if it's aluminum. It's very flexible, uh, which is not so good when you're trying to squeeze this over and over and over because when you're creaming corn, you really want this to be tied around the cob and get all that corn milk out. That's what makes creamy corn. And I wanna be honest about something else before we start on this. This corn came from Walmart. This came from a farmer's market. We bought three years, but it was fairly expensive. And then we never got around to cooking it. And so we needed some corn to do for this video. We quit growing corn several years ago because we just couldn't grow it as good as we could get it here in Arkansas. From a place that's known for corn in Arkansas, people drive from all over to get it. It's cheap. We can't grow it for what they grow it for and we can't do it as good. And it's just one of those things we gave space in our garden to other things. But I want to say that to encourage you guys that you don't have to grow everything. You don't have to even get it at a farm to be preserving food. This came from Walmart and it's going to preserve just as well as something I grew. I do encourage you to grow as as much as you can it's better quality but don't let that stop you if you're not in a position right now to put up food you can put up food you bought at just your regular grocery store one other thing i was going to say we did get a bunch of corn from that farm but circumstances um, came up this summer to where we wound up giving it away so that's why we are using walmart corn we're at the end of our corn season and you just couldn't find it locally anymore um, so this is literally the last tidbit of corn we could find was at walmart and we want to give these a try because we know some of you are north of us and you're probably just now harvesting your corn sir are you ready you're in here in the ac that's a good thing huh Yes, I'm tired of being out in the heat. Been out in the heat too much today. I'm gonna do it in the kitchen. So I kind of told them that was an antique from my mama. Um, and I squeezed this last time and was pushing the corn through it. And I'm gonna guarantee you for every bit of four months, I had a cramp pain in my thumb from sitting there squeezing that. But we did what, probably 140 years of corn? quite a few so this year we're going to try a few different styles um this one i tried to get the uh, it's got a tube in it that you can actually mount this into holds it in there and, and run this down through it they were out of them they still had these we're still going to give it a try i have also tried to make one of these just using a lag bolt cutting it off but i'm going to see if this one will work better my lag bolt did not work very well so kernel cutter all right one thing I've noticed since just taking that off, this one here is sprung open and you have to squeeze it and that's what cramped my hand. This one's not. And you can see how small that is. It says that's going to adjust and hug the ear of corn and I've already noticed this says right here strips kernels off ear of corn with one stroke. We're going to give that a try. And this is actually, it says genuine stainless steel. So. Um, We'll see if it lives up to its claims. All right, all I've done here is I've notched a few boards or a couple boards there to set. Set down on my five gallon bucket. I can set that right on top of it. It's just more hands, more less things holding your hand. We got it. We got two. I need, I need some ears of current. Yeah, we got to get this uh, show on the road. Shucked. 
I was trying to think of the word. Shucks. You gotta get this orange up? Yeah. I'm gonna say she's an Instant Pot fanatic. Instant Pot, Instant Pot, Instant Pot. And I am just gonna say, I know a lot on YouTube you're probably, are y'all just saying that? Like, do I, they pay y'all? I bought every bit of this. Instant Pot is a good, reliable brand. These have lasted me. I bought these before YouTube. I use them all the time. They save so much heat out of my kitchen in the summers. Um, yes, they do warm up, but nothing like warming up your whole stove and oven. So before we get this corn shucked and get this show on the road, I'm gonna show you one meal I'm gonna do with this corn. The kids say I'm obsessed with this meal, and I kind of am. It's easy and it's good. So first thing we're gonna do is some BWFF. These are just boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Uh, we also have tenders. These are all available in our meat store. And we eat out of this too. That's that's the number one reason we started raising meat was good quality meat for our family. So I shop right at the same place as you guys. So I'm gonna cook some chicken breasts in one Instant Pot. Probably gonna use this big one. Let's go with this big one. This is an eight quart. I have a lot of people that have asked like, what size should I get? I would definitely go with the eight quart if, uh, especially if you're like a family of of three or four. Now you can get by with the six quart if you're a family of like two or if you just don't use them much. But I use mine all the time and a lot of times when I'm using them, I'm using both of them. So this is actually, our chicken breast come two to a package. That's four. That's actually gonna be a little much for this meal, but we like it left over. So I like to do what I call batch cooking, which is just cooking extra. And then I don't maybe have to cook tomorrow night. I can make something else with chicken. So this is just some Redmond's Real Salt. I get this as Azure Standard. Then I am going to just take my pot out. Just put some water in here. Not much water escapes in these Instant Pots. So just put some water. I'm actually gonna cook some rice after this and I'm gonna use what cooks, what this chicken cooks in to cook the rice. Y'all don't look too close, this is probably dirty, but we're just gonna do that about 20 minutes. Chicken breasts, no bone, are not gonna take that long. That may be overkill. Now, other thing, I'm out of black beans from the garden that I had frozen, so I'm using, these are non-GMO black turtle beans from Azure Market. I love their brand. There's a link to them below. Thank y'all to everyone who's ever ordered from them and used our link, that helps us a lot. Um, but I love their brand. It's the cheaper brand of stuff they sell and it, everything I've gotten that's their brand has been good. So I am just going to, now listen, the official recommendation is probably sort these, but I'm not going to. Ben's only ever broken like one or two teeth eating beans that I didn't sort, right? <laughs> All right, I do have to show this though. Farmer's Market versus Walmart corn. That's pathetic. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, get to shucking. I'm gonna save one of these Farmer's Market ones for uh, the other corn cutter. We want this to be an equal experiment. So it's gonna be the majority of Walmart corn he's using, but he is gonna use a Farmer's Market. Okay, Walmart's defense, that's a Walmart cob. Now it looks a lot better. Our farmers working cubs. That boat definitely looks a lot better than my homemade black boat. All right, that was half of them. So give me on the Colonel Cutter. Colonel Cutter. Your opinion. I definitely like this one a lot more than I like the old one. Uh, the old one's, I guess, cool for an antique thing, but this one works much more efficiently. But the only thing is, with a high-speed drill, be careful, you will make a mess. I've slung more corn in the floor. <laughs> It'll clean up. But for efficiency, that thing works great. The lag bolt is definitely a whole lot better than the one I made. And uh, you could do this outside and not worry about the mess, but it's, it's literally 95 degrees today. All right. I think the length of the lag bolt, and it's got a, a stop plate on the end of it that, that made it stop, 
drilling up into the cob mm -hmm. of corn. <laughs> got a stop bolt that made it stop. You get it? You get it. All right, now on to the corn cutter. This is made by Lee Manufacturing. So you're going Made to... in the USA. There you go. Do you know what you're doing? Let's give give a little instructions on what, what they should do if they get this. I don't know how to give instructions if they ain't learned it yet, but. It, I know small end goes down, and I'm sorry if these silks are bothering y'all. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> so you can, uh, that's just not very juicy corn, no, it's I don't not. think. But that would be great for whole kernel. Whole kernel, you, I did read you don't want to pass it over more than one time. This will probably mix pretty well. But some of that was creamy, so this will mix good. Pretty dry. Yeah. I think it's old. Get a Walmart corn. Yeah. Okay, let's try a better looking ear. You can see some of these wind up, even this one looks better. It's all yellow, but it looks better than that one. But this actually came from Walmart too, I think. I, some of them are different. No. This may be the farmer's market That's the farmer's corn market. though. So let's try one that that should be juicier. Oh yeah, not very yeah. really different. Yeah. Just keep your fingers up away from the blade. Keep it on top of the cob. Yeah, that, yeah. I like that. So that's working pretty good. Yep. Okay, let's do all these and then we'll compare. So now you can take that thing, Ben's gonna keep going, but you can take that thing and put that end he's got down in the bucket, He's cause that's holding it still, that bucket. You could place that end against a wall or a backsplash it says, and hold it in place and do this flat over top of like a big dish pan or something. This bucket method seems pretty good though. You see how much has been caught down in there that would be just kind of splashing everywhere. And corn's sticky and starchy, so you'd have it everywhere. Well, you can see the aftermath. There is corn on the floor some. Not terrible. I didn't do too bad. I'd say we got like a gallon and a half looking at that bucket there, because that's a five gallon bucket. What do you think, Ben? And how many years was that, 20? That was 23 years. 23. All right, so give us your official recommendation. Um, pick up, show them the, what they're officially called again. The Colonel Cutter. You can't say that anyway but country. Colonel Cutter. Colonel Cutter. I really like that one uh, for Speedy. And it seemed like it done, it done with me working it, a better job of cleaning off the ears of corn. These are from the Corn Cutter. Um, I was a little nervous. <laughs> Afraid I was gonna get my fingers in there and have some extra parts done in the corn. Ooh. So, uh, I didn't get all of it on the ends of it. Um, you, which you'd get more comfortable in figuring out like oh yeah. how to hold it and all that. And there was what, 10, 11 ears there. And then also on this, if you don't have a drill, this is definitely gonna be the way to go. I wouldn't wanna sit there with this and try to push them down through no that way. like I done last year. So between the two, depending on if you have a drill, I would might go with the uh, kernel cutter. If you don't have a drill, I'd probably recommend the, the corn cutter here? I say just from a woman's standpoint, the corn cutter, which was this wooden one that you like slide it across, that'd be good if you were cutting this off in your kitchen over a dish pan. Um, like if, if you didn't want to do this, that the drill thing is a, is more messy. That's when the sprayage happened in here. The the wooden one, the corn cutter, it's a, it's a lot more tidy, but it took a little more time. And if you've got like kids helping you or maybe you're clumsy like me and you might not want to be messing with sharp blades, then I'd probably go with the kernel cutter and the drill. But like Ben said, that depends on if you have a drill. All right, so let's finish up supper. I'm gonna clean. Get this mess yeah, we gotta clean this up. But let me just say this too. Don't throw this away. Your animals will love it. All kinds of animals would love that for a snack. All right, so like Andrea said, we're gonna feed these scraps to the pigs. Here, pig, 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 pig. Oh. Be good for them. 
fatten them the rest of the way up. These are getting ready to go to the processor here shortly. Actually, I think uh, we've got one half still available. So if you're interested, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's food. So if you're interested in buying some bulk pork, we still have one half available. Besides Dot over there. Pick, 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 pick. Hey, pick, pick. Happy animals. I only have one bad day here on the farm. So let's finish this and do something with this corn on this grain. So our black beans got done. Okay, we're actually just gonna rinse this out and we're gonna cook in it again. You don't want, you don't want purple corn. So we are gonna use some water because this this will need some water to cook in. You're going to want to salt this a little bit because let's be honest, salt makes everything better. And then we are going to steam this. It's not going to take very long, so I'm probably just going to cut it down to about five minutes because under pressure, that's not going to take very long at all. Let's check on this chicken over here. Oh yeah, that looks good. So we're actually going to cook in there again too. So I'm just going to take this chicken out. And then I'm going to cook some rice right in this chicken broth. I've got about three cups of rice and so I need about three cups of water. And your Instapot probably has it too, but it tells how many cups. That's a little over three cups of broth, but that'll still be fine. Now this is instant rice. I like to use um, rice that's not instant also but that's what I'm using tonight. And so on instant rice, you really just wanna cook that, this is gonna sound crazy, for about one minute. So you're gonna cut this down to one minute and uh, it's actually going to steam and cook in the process of the Instapot heating up. It's only gonna be on for a minute and then it's gonna shut off and it's gonna fluff up in that process. I promise it works. Now if you're cooking rice in your Instapot, like brown rice or something that's not cooked at all, uh, you're looking at more like 20 minutes or so in the Instapot, 22 minutes, something like that. All right, here's what you do. I overcooked the rice a little bit, but it'll be okay. Get some rice, some corn, some beans, And some chicken and I like to even use like some lettuce and tomato maybe some avocado but we're not going that far tonight I like to make a little sauce out of mayonnaise and yogurt and paprika cumin and some lime juice mix that up drizzle it on just a little Mexican themed sauce but tonight we are going easy with the bottled yum yum sauce which is so not healthy for you but we're gonna go light on that best thing I like about this is these three things right here on my Weight Watchers plan are free. So all I have to count is rice. So that's what's for supper. See you guys on the next one. God bless.